and welcome to the money round. I am the money coach. Join with me, my right hand man on the ones and twos, Jay Hill, keeping it real. And we're also also brought to you by Extreme Training, where the elite come and train with the elites. And our sponsors, Battle Gear, the best sports apparel in the game. Get battle ready, get battle tested. All right, get battle ready, get battle gear. Sorry about that. And uh, there's their Instagram and Twitter. You can follow them on. All right, today coming back, hanging with us again is Mr. Holmes. What's up, Holmes? What's going on, fellas? Good to be back. And we got the man, the CBC legend, Coach Justin Tatum, represent. What up, Coach Tat? <laughs> What's up, fellas? Thanks for having me. I don't know if I'm a legend yet, man. I'm trying to work on it, but well, oh, I'm getting there. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say that because, I mean, right now I'm both in two rings. <laughs> I, I just want to throw that out there. It's yeah, good. yeah. <laughs> I just want to throw that out there for the fuck fans. Everything, every, every chance I get a chance to catch up, uh, something happens, you know. <laughs> I know. So, Coach, man, how was that this year? I mean, you, Caleb Love, McDonald's All-American. Man, you was on the roll, and, and we was rooting for you. You know, it's been rough at CBC this year. We have no titles. So, you was the one that was going to bring it home. Like, <laughs> how, how was it for us? Uh, for the for the season, it was during the you know before all this stuff happened. The season was great. I mean, it was what we expected. We had a tough, strenuous schedule. You know what I mean? And we was built for the players that we had. You know, especially Caleb Love and some promising uh, sophomores and juniors to be. Uh, and so we had a great great year. But then you know you're going into districts, you're on a run, and then um, something out of nowhere happens, out of your control happens. And um, you know, seeing us on a roll that like we were, and it happened to bluntly stopped, you know, and out the midst. It, it was tough. You know, that, that was a feeling or something I really can't explain. But, you know, it took the la next last couple months for me to, like, you know, just to realize how good of a team, how much uh, chemistry we had to get a chance to reflect on the season, uh, but hated the way it ended. But um, for the whole – for the 2019-2020 season, for the most part, it was great. All right. Now, was Caleb Love your first McDonald All-American as a coach? Yes, he was. Yep. Yes, he was. I guess besides your son? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, besides him. I had a lot of couple uh, recommended or nominated, but uh, he was the first one that actually became one under my 13-year tenure, Coach. All right. So that last picture, uh, was, was that when you were in Europe? Did you see that last Which picture one? that was on there? Oh, uh -uh. Hey, we'll pull back. We'll go a Here's couple a... back, because some of these are pretty classic photos. <laughs> You got some classic. Where are you getting them from, man? Oh, I do some deep diving, you. Coach. St. Louis you right there. I Look do some deep diving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it probably so, was. I played in Amsterdam for a while. Amsterdam? So, uh -huh. so how long did you play in Amsterdam, Coach? Uh, about two and a half years. Uh, when I got out of college, uh, I played on a traveling team, a uh, Nike traveling team. and then, Right there. Uh, right there, Coach. That picture. You see it? Let me see. I got to scroll through here. Uh, or uh, oh, he, he got the screen up. My bad. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I can't yeah, see it. Now. Okay, but go okay. ahead. You done, what are you saying? Yeah, yeah but uh, a couple years after, uh, I, went, I did a traveling team after uh, college. And then um, after the end of that, because I played for a team that uh, travels and play exhibition games against top colleges around. And so got picked up overseas after that. So I've been overseas about two and a half years until I came back home. Nice, nice. So... Uh, when you come back home, did you get directly into coaching, or what did you do right after that? I actually did. I actually got directly into coaching. Uh, I went up under Bobby McCormick tenure for a year. Uh, the guy, uh, the coach at Priory now, former CBC yeah. coach at, uh, that I played up under, uh, came right in, went up under him. He uh, sat me on assistant bench and uh, assistant, uh, as assistant coach. And from then on, I just knew I had a passion for it. The next year, I went to apply for a coaching job at Soldan High School, where I um, – coached for six years and uh from then on I, i've been loving it been loving it nice nice so uh now i know you got a son on the team now right on, the, on your yep. team right now and what's yep. his name again jacob jacob tatum jacob jacob yeah so yep. you and hughes both have a son on the team like how ironic is that that you guys both went to cbc and then now both your sons are playing together on the team yeah, that's, that's weird, you know. It, I mean, it was weird as I don't know what. But, I mean, when we both – when we know when they was the same age a while ago, I knew – but Jacob lived in New Orleans for the majority of his life. Uh, we, 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 we laughed at one time that they was going to go to the same school, but Jacob never lived here. And so, ironically, he moved up 
the beginning of his freshman year, and then they happened to walk into to freshman year together together. And it was, you know, for us, it was touching because we like, man, we kind of thought about this or dreamt this or talked about it, and we never knew it was going to actually happen until then. Nice, nice. So, Holmes, I'm sure you're like a sports guru. So, you know, what is like <laughs> uh, one of your favorite teams in basketball that you might watch? So I wouldn't consider myself a sports guru, but I, I, when it comes to basketball, I love talent more than I love teams because okay. it's, there's so much talent that's spread out throughout the NBA, right? I mean, obviously you got LeBron, you, you got his son, you got all these different guys. And I was anxious to see how Zion was going to do when he came into the league. So I like watching Zion. I like watching his athleticism and seeing how he matches up. And, and just seeing the, the next crop of, of young, talented players, because it's different for the NBA than it is for, for football, right? Where football, they right. got to stay in college for a little while. In the NBA, now they have a lot more options with G League and, and kind of going overseas and doing things. So I always like just seeing the, the talent kind of come through. And, and I watch all basketball. I don't really focus on one team. It's tough for me to be a, a fan of one team when there's so much talent to, to be watched throughout the entire season. So I'm anxious to see how this thing's going to work out with the bubble and whatever else. All right. So, Coach Ted, you think the uh, the seat, they're going to finish the NBA season or what do you think they might do? Yeah, I'm for sure they're going to finish it. They're going to find any way they can to finish it. You know what I mean? So, like, if they have to do replacement players, like that movie, uh, that baseball movie. Replacements. Back in the day. <laughs> the replacements. Yeah, they had a couple. Yeah. yeah, so I feel they're going to do it. I mean, it's they feel that. The, the country needs it. Um, you know, the play, some a lot of players are advocating for it, but then a lot of them are not. You know, so it's a sticky situation. You got to respect both sides. Uh, but I feel the NBA is going to go forward with it. All right. So you say you're running a camp. So like, are you guys trying to take like the COVID precautions, or like, what are you guys doing for us to camp? Trying to oh, keep for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we. Uh, what we're doing, we're going. We're making sure we take everybody' temperatures. We send out a waiver to the parents before they even uh, bring their kids. And make sure they does not have any of these symptoms or been diagnosed with anything. Um, they make sure they, they their parents sign that on off. And then we have the, uh, all my counselors and my players. Um, they're wearing masks. Myself here and there, but I, since I speak the most and direct, I do still, you know, keep myself distance. But I have to make sure I project to everybody and talk to them. Um, and we had we have enough court spaces where we uh, we separate them. Uh, through the, I found a couple of places that had big courts so we can separate the kids around. So and everybody brings their ball. Uh, everybody brings their ball, and we disinfect as much as we can. We have everything disinfected around. So but so far so good. You know, no bad, not, uh, you know nothing as wrong as when nothing has been bad or anything like that. No parents complain, but the numbers are clearly not as what they usually be. For every summer because of the situation and that's the that's the tough part um because you know we want to make sure that some of these kids or the parents get their kids out and still be you know cautious as possible um but we do understand the ones who choose not to but uh we just want to make sure all the kids just don't stay at home and drive their parents crazy all, all summer all right so is uh is jason back or he's still in uh boston now training he's in boston he they've back? been never came back uh he stayed up there the whole time um, and, you know, went traveled down to Orlando when we were really in the midst of the COVID. He, him and his family went down there and just, you know, able to enjoy the sun and get some break and stay away from people. But he has been in Boston the last month. Uh, they've been some is back to work, I think, this week, I believe. Uh, and so he, they're, you know, slowly but surely starting to get back in the midst of things. So I'm going to go as a parent, you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure like most dads, and moms too, of course, uh, wants their son to like achieve something that, you know, you got your son to achieve that you achieve. So how do you, how did you deal with like bringing your sons up through basketball and not being a crazy dad, but still keeping them uh, engaged and loving the sport? I, I mean, I, I tell them sometimes I was a crazy dad, but I had an understanding what I was doing. It wasn't my ego. It wasn't, you know, having a perception or want to have, making sure that this is what he's going to do. I was a crazy dad because I knew what it took for my son to get, A, I was only worried about going to school for free. You know, that was probably about 80 to 90 percent of the time do his, you know, for him starting to play basketball into high school, we was like, we want to go to school for free. From then on out, if something happens, something happens. You know what I mean? But uh, it got, but I was the crazy dad as far as like, you have to prepare yourself in so many ways, uh, you know, differently from your peers. You know, Jason wasn't, you know, he'll go to Six Flags maybe about three or four times out the summer. 
or he'll go to certain birthday parties. And like, it was mostly either, you know, games, tournaments, training, uh, or watching, you know, uh, pro games or college games to find a way because me and him wasn't watching film at the age of eight or nine. I just, you know, it just didn't make sense. But we were watching basketball games, college and, and pros. So like, but I understood what I was doing. You know what I mean? I wasn't, I, I was that crazy, intense, loving dad. So when basketball was over for the day, he was, my, he was my best friend in the world. You know what I mean? We don't talk about what he didn't do well on the court or how hard he didn't train for that hour and a half. We talked about other things. And, you know, I wanted to make sure he understood I was still, you know, his dad first. And, you know, he – I don't know if you've seen the, the Ahmad Hicks little thing he had on me and him where he'll yeah, explain – Yeah, I did. Yeah, he'll tell you, you know, but he wouldn't change anything for the world. He's like, my dad, you know, was – you know, had – me and his mom had him young. So just for me to be – uh, in his life consistent and then besides just being that you know having a bond or attachment with him that you know that we both can see something good out of that's just you know it was it was great for both of us so like I said I was but the crazy parents now have a different meaning they you know they <laughs> you know they have a different they have a different goal for their kids and it's not the best of their well-being that I see most of the time in parents it's just like I want to be just like my, you know, my girlfriend's son, he's supposed to be just as good as him in basketball or wrestling or whatever the case may be. You don't know, understand, like, your son or daughter might not think that way or be pushed that way or, or you know, might not have hit that uh, that, that level of competitiveness yet in, in an age group. So, like, you know, that's sometimes, and their parents and the kids go this way, you know, instead right. of trying to find a way to come together more because they don't know how to separate it. And because most, most of the parents never played high-level sports. And so, like, you know, they're just doing it out of what they feel that, you know, if a young kid or somebody made it out of poverty or somebody like, oh, man, we was poor, too, or our lights went on, too. We can do that, baby. You're going to do this. Like, no, that's not, <laughs> you know, just because his son played football, it ain't going to work for him. Or basketball, it ain't going to work for him. So, you know, I was crazy, but I was different, man. And, you know, I, I think it worked out for the best of us. All right. So I know you talk about going to Six Flags. I remember, you probably don't remember me because I was in the wrestling, but the Hoopers was always known. I remember we used to be back up in Saints back in the day when you and Hughes would be up in Saints. We stayed up in Saints. Up in yeah, the club. we did. That's so, what we did. Hey, <laughs> hey, home, so, so Saints is like a roller skating ring that we all used to go to <laughs> back in the day. And uh, it had like a dance floor and people skated back in the day. And him and Larry Hughes would always be up there and all the sports guys always be up there. But me being a wrestler and football, you know, I wasn't as known as much as uh, the Hoopers. They always got the good treatment up in Saints. <laughs> and, you know, a little love. We jumped the line here and there, you know. Right. But, <laughs> right. I'm like, I didn't get to jump the line. Like, no, state champs can't jump the line. So it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that was good times, man. That was good times. So I'm, I'm referring to, so Holmes, like, what, who do you think are some of the craziest parents? I mean, you've been around kind of all sports. Do you think the basketball parents are as crazy as the wrestling parents? <laughs> um, I think it's a different kind of crazy. Obviously, I see more wrestling parents than I do basketball parents um, because – you know, wrestling parents, they're, you have kids that can be a national champion at the age of seven. And, <laughs> and I mean, that's the craziest thing out there. Like, I'm sorry, but your seven-year-old, you know, Rob Cole isn't in the stands trying to recruit, like, you know, they're, they're not being recruited at seven, you know? So I've seen some, some absolutely crazy wrestling parents. I've seen a dad throw away a kid's clothes because he lost. He was about seven years old. I'm like, you're going to ruin the sport for the kids, you know? And it, it's just, like I said, I haven't seen as many basketball parents. I've seen a lot of football parents. Football parents are, yeah. are a lot different too, where they're like, listen, my kid has to get playing time. And if he's not getting playing time and it, the generations are completely different too. When I was in high school, you know, I think my parents talked to my coaches, but only because they were actually friends with my coaches. They never talked about playing time. They never asked why I wasn't playing as much as I should have been or whatever else it was. And if it was a question, it was, what can I do to prepare him better? It was never, you, you have it out for my kids. So the whole generation thing with parents going crazy, I think, you know, he kind of hit the nail on the head where he was a friend to his son when they were not training. Now it's parents living through their kids trying to make yeah. sure that their kid is doing something so that they can be in the spotlight too. And it's just like, let your kid enjoy the sport because if you're going to yell at him when he's eight, nine years old, he's not going to want to do it by the time he's 18 or 19. So make sure he is going to Six Flags. Make sure he is having fun with the sport as well as having fun outside the sport. 
And, and Ryan, just to contest to that, I, I, I put myself in that category that you, when you talk to a wrestling parent about he threw his clothes away, I stripped my whole team from their uniform <laughs> after they lost the game when Jason was Don't tell yourself, old. coach. <laughs> so I, I told everybody, take their uniform off right then and there. You don't deserve to have it on. And I, in the middle of a game, uh, when Jason was in the fifth grade, but he was playing two years up, he had a bad first half. Okay, and he had a bad first half, and then I mean a terrible first half. And so he was playing soft because he was a little nervous of the kids because they was older. So in the middle of the court at halftime, I grabbed him up by his jersey. Remember, my son is in the fourth grade, nine, ten years old. I lift him up, and I really chew into him in front of everybody to where he's crying and bawling. His mom is just like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, you know, I'm, not, like, I'm only 22, 23, you know, because I, I'm still playing. I'm still competitive, things like that. But when I finished and when I got done, the second half, we were down eight to 10 points that game. My son scored 30 straight and we won by 10, crying. Because he's like, I, you know, he was, he was so ticked off because I've had to find buttons to push at him. And then when we were done, he jumped, I made sure he jumped in the car with me. And, you know, we had a, a talk and it was over. We was going to get, you know, sodas, ice cream, pizza. And we were back messing around at six o'clock in the afternoon. But I told him, don't let me do that again because we're never afraid of nobody. No matter, you know, I'm playing you up for a reason. I expect you to compete. I don't, if you don't win, you don't win, but you don't bow down, you know? And that was the kind mm -hmm. of uh, message that I want to make sure I sent across to him. So I did have those, you know, instances, but I never wanted to live through him. You know, I never cared, cared about that. So coach, I mean, the situation you just explained is what, you know, I refer to it. And I think me in the sports world refer to it as, you know, I tell my kids on wrestling, you got to become a dog. Like, how do you make an athlete become a dog to where they just not going to take it? Like, like how do you build that in, man? Your son, I mean, Jason right now has become a dog, right? He, he's trying yeah. to get the NBA. So how, right. how do you build yeah. that mentality? Hopefully you get to the child early, you know what I mean, and be consistent with them. Like I was telling you about, you got to be tough love and real love. And and if they and once, that, once they see that repetitiveness and then you, they see you do that to other kids, because I want, once again, I was coaching – so then when Jason was in the fifth and sixth and he practiced with my varsity team every day after school, he comes from after school, come my varsity team and they kick his butt and he'll sit there. And once again, I can't, I can't get it up the court. You better find a way. So like there was consistently, I was consistently, you know, challenging him and, you know, but I had him, we, we was doing a younger age, but it's kind of hard to get a, a eighth grade or a ninth grade that you've never met, you know, that you've never really seen to come to your school that has all the talent in the world but don't have that dog and you have one way to put it in them, but they're not used to it. You know what I mean? Right. You don't ever know when yeah. that's going to switch on. And so that's tough. That's why I say you got to kind of, hopefully that the parent or previous coaches have an understanding to and try to steal as much as they can. So when they get to you or me or coach Hill or anybody, they're like, okay, I, I, I know what he's mean. I'm a little bit more mature to handle that, but now they don't. <laughs> so we're getting those 15, 14, 15, 16 year olds that are just talented as hell but can't not like, you know, can't, you know, soft as I don't know what. And then you up there and you, we got to adjust because if we don't adjust, you know, then we're the, the bad guys because, you know, we, we're, we're, we're down and we're hurting the kids. We're the bad guys. So we, we have adjust our ways, which is not bad. Don't get me wrong, but it is frustrating on us because like we, we understand we've coached kids that have built dog in them or seen dog in them. And all we had to do is sprinkle our knowledge and our, and our consistency stuff on them for them to become what they need. And the ones who don't, it's, it's frustrating, man. But you know, as a parent early, I think you got to start early with them. You got to start early with them, man. And um, if they become a basketball star, a wrestling star, so be it, but they will be, they will be ready for this world out here, especially the one we live in now, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, so, I mean, hey, to, to that point, like, I had my share too, you know? My, my dad has gripped me up when I was young, so I, <laughs> I, I know exactly how that is. And, you know, I come from a yeah. professional athlete family myself, so there was, there was kind of no option but to have that dog. I may not have reached the, the highest of the high, but I put in my work, and yeah. it created the, the person that I am now, and I'm at a very high level career wise now. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was that dog that was instilled in me, whether it was on the football field or the mat or whatever, that I can sit yeah. in an office and say, this is how things are going to go. Or, yeah. Hey, this is my idea and not afraid to speak up because those are the things that you had to instill in him on the court. But I'm sure that when he's talking to talking to his agent, he's talking about a deal. He's like, no, this is what I want. And he's not afraid yeah, to exactly. speak up 
and say those exact things. So that tough love, it goes a long way. And, you know, he may have scored 30 and he may have to figure out how to get it up the court against dudes that were twice his age. But, you know, it, it goes so much further than, than just trying to get the ball in the hoop and tr- just trying yeah. to score some points. It does. And people don't understand that's what more, more proud of Jason than I am than, you know, his basketball guy gift ability is that he's able to, you know, handle himself so well in the media or controversy or anything like that and, and has his own mind and knows what he's he can speak up on or what he can't speak up on, but he's not afraid to, you know. And so that's what makes me just as proud of this his guy gift ability, you know, because what 18, 19 year old is prepared to step in in the starting role when Gordon Hayward breaks his ankle. Uh, in the first season, the first game against LeBron and, them, and then, you know, goes out there, scores 18 points in the loss. That's fine. But what 8, 19 year old, somebody who has been consistently driven like, hey, man, this is just another obstacle. This is another challenge. This is human beings. I'm, this is what I love to do. So you put all that together and you let your talent and your, and your work speak. And so those are things that I try to, you know, make sure I prepare him for, not just basketball. All right. So uh, we'll switch to Caleb Love. So he, he's going to North Carolina to be like, you know, I really saw this year, I mean, last year too, but I really saw this year he kind of take over games and take over the leadership role. So, you know, how do you think his career is playing out? And do you think he has enough dog in him to, to, to take it to the next level? He has way more than enough in him. Um, Caleb is somebody that, we once again, we rarely see that we got a chance to get a hold of at the age of 14 to 15 that all of his parents and his mom and dad have been on him in a way that he can receive and accept our – our, our tough love and our knowledge. Well, and Caleb, in four years, he did it. He didn't complain I one time coming in uh, as his freshman starting or not playing much because I didn't start him. He played varsity, but he played minutes here and there because he wasn't ready. The next sophomore year from junior to senior, he, he started and scored, I mean, almost eight to 900 points a season. Um, so, like, each summer, Caleb understood what, what it needs to take. And, you know, for me, if it's a reminder of me, you know, telling him what he needs to do, the, the structure, or allowing him or being able for him to talk to Jason and other guys and Brad and stuff like that to give him that motivation to, to keep working. Whatever it was, he stayed in that positive lane. And, you know, I, he has more than enough. I, for him, to, the way he grew this season from junior year to senior year, uh, you know, I have no complaints. You know, you, you're, he's a rare breed. And so, you know, I, I feel he's going to be – his name is going to get called next year, you know, next, next year, next draft. So I'm, I'm looking forward and happy for him and his family. Well, you gotta invite me to the draft party since I ain't get invited to the last one. Can I get to the draft party? Yeah, we're gonna. I'll send you the address the night before. You know, what I mean, it's like <laughs> secret, secret we're trying location. to send me the wrong address. <laughs> no, nah, I'll, I'll make sure you come. Uh, I, I know how you basketball players man. keeping the wrestlers out the party. Y'all up in sight sitting uh, in the DJ yeah. booth. <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all like to get the dancing and moving around too much, man. And, you know, we're, we're more laid back. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we hey, need the so, energy though. So did you get to watch the last dance with uh, Michael Jordan? Oh, man. Uh, man. Me, uh, I'm on FaceTime with uh, Jason on with the last, every episode. And then I have my other son sitting with him. He's in my bedroom on my couch. So we watched together, every, every each one. And so, like, it was just crazy. It, it was it was something that I'm glad they got a chance to see. It helped me remind it. And, you know, uh, I hope I it gave him a different edge. Say what, Hill? Huh? I said I didn't want it to end. Like, yeah, me either. You talked about me. reminding you and that. Like, I was a huge basketball fan up till when Michael kind of stepped away that second time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was even as a wrestler, football player, everything. He was mindset wise my idol when it came to this is what you have to do to be the best. I'm going to put you at this level. You know, if you're not going to do it, then get out but if you're going to be with me we're going to be at this perfection level yeah yeah and and, and some and some of the episodes jason would call me say i said he said that's where i see where you get your attitude from you <laughs> you grew up you grew up in this area this some of the yeah. stuff he said this some of the stuff reminded me of this shit, man like come on right? like yeah i told you this is you know this is what i was growing up off the seed and watching you know while we made it like well, i'm glad you watched it. you know what i'm saying i'm glad you grew up through that era because it helped him you know, and my, my, young, my younger son I, loved it too. I can see it when you – definitely see it when you coach, like the weight room experiences when we're in there at the same time you guys are. Yeah. I love the fact that, you know, like Michael did, constant student of the game, student of the sport. Mm-hmm. If you're going to play this, you better know everything about it, history-wise, everything else. Like, 
You got to because a lot of right now is just for the likes on your your Twitter or your re, or your IG or whatever. That's what that's what they're doing it for. I said this is not what it's for because it'd be taken away in a minute. Like I had two, a knee blew out. You know, it was taken away from me, so I had to be able to adjust and do other things. But I loved it so much. I rehab sorry. I made my goal. Uh, I accomplished my goal of playing professionally because I always told myself I want to make something from this game. You know, I wanted to pay me somehow, and when it did, I did my two years and I came back and started coaching. And I was, but I had to say, hey, you guys got a meaning about it. If it's just because somebody's gonna like you or retweet or one layup or video that you did, if that's all you got for it, then it's it's gonna move. You know, it's gonna move right past you. It's not gonna help you at all. You know, you don't know how to prepare that for it to help you. So. You're right. You're right, man. I, I have to teach these kids a reasoning behind why you're doing it. If this is not it, then stop it. Or at least don't come to me. <laughs> you know. All right. All right, we're going to move on to sneakers. I know my boy uh, Holmes loves sneakers. But before we do that, you got to see my custom-made CBC wrestling shoes right here. Can you see that? Right yeah, there? I see it. Okay, I see yeah. it. you may need to get you, get you some for the, the basketball team, but make them basketball <laughs> shoes. So my boy Holmes is a sneakerhead, so I'm pretty sure he wants to know is uh, Jason gonna come out with his own his, his sneakers that that he might can pick up or, or something like that? Um, you know, he got the Jordan 34s right now that he's he wears as he customized for like he has St. Louis Blues, he has a, the uh, the Chinese shop. You know how we do the Chinaman and stuff yeah. like that. He uh, he had a lot I don't know of if you say different... Chinaman. That could be racist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. Said, the Chinese, Chinese food, play. coach. Chinese I know that's an old St. Louis play. saying. <laughs> You're right. I apologize. No disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese places. <laughs> uh, he had one for U City and stuff like that. But it's the Jordan 34s. It's not his signature shoe yet. If he becomes a signature athlete, you know that's a blessing. Uh, but it's 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 a replica. Well, it's it's his as far as like the design of it and things like that. So, but not his. Okay. He, he's not. He doesn't have a KD or LeBron or you know a signature deal situation yet. We're you know keeping our fingers crossed and hopefully we cross that path when it comes. All right, Coach, so I'm, I'm pretty sure you're a sneakerhead. So so what's some of your favorite brands or favorite uh, signature shoe that you like? Uh, I, whatever's free. <laughs> <laughs> whatever's free, man. I, I, I don't complain too much. I don't really know the, the, the Jordan 4s or 34. I don't. He had to show me a picture. So, I mean, I just like I like Air Maxes a lot, too, because they're more comfortable okay. on my feet. So I'm a Air Max and uh, uh uh, jo uh, yeah, mostly, mostly Air Maxes, man. So, cause I like the bubbles, but I'm getting uh, what you got, Planet Valley Ices, man. So I, I gotta yeah. have my. <laughs> I don't need. I need something with a lot of comfort. <laughs> so, that's cool. So, uh, how about that? So, Holmes, this guy like basketball. They get Nike gear. They get Under Armour gear. The coaches get gear for free. How can wrestling? <laughs> ever think we can get to a spot like that where the, I mean the high school coaches get treated good and I, yeah. I got a bag for you. <laughs> yeah I mean that's the thing is it's it's always been depending on what university you go to and I have a I have a UNC wrestling t-shirt on right now so <laughs> I've gotten plenty of different gear and t-shirts and sweatshirts and whatever else from all the different universities and you know you get a t-shirt here and there from a high school but you see how there's just so many different brands in wrestling that try to outfit everyone and whatever else. Right. It's kind of hard. Wrestling's not one of those big revenue driving sports like basketball, where there's, you know, everybody in, everybody in wrestling has to do camps to earn some money. In basketball, you know, y'all got some camps that are sponsored by Nike, <laughs> sponsored by Adidas. You know, you're, you guys are, are, are in with all the collaboration of all these different companies. So, I think that what it's going to take for wrestling is for wrestling to start collaborating with some of these brands with, with ASICs coming on because, you know, Jordan Burroughs has his own shoe. First black wrestler to ever have a shoe, Jordan Burroughs. And you see the different things that, that he's doing with all the different brands. I mean, he was sponsored by Polo during the Olympics. He was sponsored by, uh, he's, he's obviously sponsored by ASICs. So I think what it's going to take is kind of the same thing that basketball has with Nike basketball is to get some of these different brands to start collaborating for camps. And I think that'll start taking care of some of these schools the same way that you, you can get taken care of as, as a basketball coach or a basketball player or even a football player. Right. Yeah. Coach Tyler, he's like, you had to go somewhere real quick. Scared. That's what I'm, but he can get a, uh, no, you good coach. You got to take care of something. Uh, it was my daughter too. Like, come okay. on, get to the pool. Like, uh, how, how is is that the baby? Is that the baby? Yeah, that's the baby. She just came here. Like, come on, come on. I'm coming. I'm coming. It's all good. I'm so tired. 
I'm missing her at our uh, lifting sessions. <laughs> I, I, she missed me down there. She wanted to do her little ladder thing, get a little exercise. Oh, yeah. She hopped on the battle ropes with me one day. <laughs> we were going to town. <laughs> so, so cool. So, Coach, uh, so what's next on the agenda then? I guess you like, are you got more camps going or? Camps uh, 13th through the 17th and then uh, the 21st through the 23rd uh, this month of July. Uh, you can go to TatumNation.com and go up and sign up and register and get all the information that you need. Right now we're at game time in St. Peter's gym, but we're trying to still maybe work on another location just in case that something different happens. But right now we're, we're, we're set for 13th to the 17th and the 21st to the 23rd, something like that. Next Monday to Thursday. So four days, uh, girls and boys, ages 8 to 14. Uh, you know, it's just a fun field day. We do, we take all the precautionary, re you know, COVID reasons to make sure everybody still can stay active and have fun and, you know, stay away from catching being sick. All right. I remember about three years ago, maybe four years ago when, when Jason came, I, I remember I had to shoot him, show him how to shoot that rock for the three point. I remember y'all was doing like 33 point shots. So if you need me to come work the camp, uh, <laughs> especially how I show, you know, Jason how to shoot, obviously it's yeah. paying off. Right. So. I don't mind. I don't mind having a, a, a wrestling section. So you know, we get tired. We got to roll around and work on some moves. And get, you know, we got it. I, I, that, hey. that, that, that make time pass, so it helps me out. Hey, I'm gonna tell you right now, like the sport of wrestling. I hopefully we go off, but I think so many administrators are scared of wrestling that because there's yeah. so much contact. I don't know if we're gonna be able to go off this year. Yeah, man. I don't know if any of this is gonna happen. So like, I'm not real gun ho on setting my basketball schedule. You know, as of right now, until things just like let me know if we can go out of town or if we can be in town. Because if I go so hard and calling everybody and try to create and do this, and then it doesn't happen, I'm like, man, you know, I waste all that time. So I'm gonna wait for more information because it's it's easy for us to put a schedule together, but it's just it's time worthy too. And you don't want to waste your time. If, you know, they're gonna come out and say, hey, you can't play. So how are we looking for next year? You think we better make a run next year as well? I'm sure we got everybody coming back. I mean, except Caleb and three other, uh, Mike West, Kyle, and Justin. But my sophomore class, the junior to B class, is really good. And they've been getting a really a lot of attention right now. And we have a really good income freshman class that I know that's helping trying to keep the tradition going on for as long as possible. So I'm, I'm positive that we can make a strong impact having Rob, Lil Rob Martin coming back, Larry Hughes, Mikhail, uh, Eric Holmes, and Justice, and the big guy, he's not even a big guy, but he's going to be a stud, uh, Karate Shivaji Branson. Yeah. Uh, he's, you know, he's an unbelievable athlete. He's going to be a senior, so he's still the, you know, head of our catalyst, you know, our, our strength next year. So I, I feel real good about our group. They've been around each other. Like I said, we're going to meet right now and um, just have a little swimming party, pizza thing, and just see guys off for, you know, they're going to leave the college soon. So just a time and get that feeling back. Hey, I'm gonna tell you this. And now, when you, when you order this gear, I think I need to be added on the gear collection. You ordered the well, gear. Well, when I when I put the forex down, they're gonna be like, man. <laughs> oh, oh, coach, you taking shots right now? You taking shots right now? <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna be like, coach. I, 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 coach, I we had a six nine two seven. No, nope, like, don't I, try to body shame me, cuz. Oh, okay, my, my bad. Two X L T. Yeah, two X. All right, just for that, you about to enter the money round. We about to get on your head. So home uh, did it last time. You got to do the money round. I'm going to get you out of here. It's rapid fire. Okay. You tell me which one you like. I'll try to throw some basketball questions in there just to make it fair. All right? Just to make it fair. All right? All right. So we start off. Uh, I, right. I do my best. All right. Pizza or hamburger? Hamburger. Chicken or steak? Chicken. Popeyes or KFC? Popeyes. Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches or Popeye's chicken sandwiches? <laughs> Which one you say? Chick-fil-A. I can't hear you for some reason. What you say? Chick-fil-A. Chick oh, Chick-fil-A. Chick All right. Uh, pop or soda? <laughs> soda. <laughs> dunk or layup? Okay. Dunk the ball. Dunk. <laughs> All right. Defense or offense? <laughs> Defense. Uh, layup or uh, in, let's see, mid range jumper or uh, layup? What'd you say, Cup? Layup. 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 Lay up. Uh, <laughs> let's go uh, McDonald's or Burger King? 
Burger King. Big, Burger King. Big cake. Burger King. <laughs> okay. Big Mac or Whopper? Big Mac. Big, Big Mac. Mac. <laughs> Batman or Superman? <laughs> Superman. Superman. Marvel or DC? You say DC? DC. DC. Yeah. DC. DC. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Dogs, yeah. <laughs> dogs all day. Dog, a dog be with it. Uh, Cheerios or Fruit Loops? Fruit, say, fruit say, Loops. Fruit Loops. I, I fruit don't know. Loops. Yeah, your signal going in and out, coach, for some reason. So, yeah, they, they probably try to cut my internet off because they wait. There you go. I hear you good. <laughs> All right, we got a uh, Ram 1500 or F-150? We drive a Range Rover, man. We can't. <laughs> Ram, F-150, F-150. F F I need to get paid like the basketball coach. All right. Well, yeah. so, uh, <laughs> Challenger, like Cam Challenger versus Camaro. 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 All right. Camaro. All right, coach. Like, this, 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 this is it right here. Five guys or In and Out Burger. Let's see where you been. Only because of the fries. <laughs> Only because of the fries. <laughs> That's it. In and Out Burger fries are terrible. Okay. Yeah, Ooh. that is true. That is <laughs> true. <laughs> Only because the burgers are In and Out of Bob. That's if I gotta go put it on the top on the cover of the front. <laughs> all right, all right. But we're going burger for burgers in and out, right? Yeah, we're going burger for burger in and out. Now that's good. okay. Restaurant for restaurant. <laughs> five. <laughs> all, all right. Guys. All right, we're going rap music. Trap or old school? No, 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 no. Old school what? Old school art. Rap. It's, it's all rap. It's all rap. All rap. Old school. Old school. <laughs> old school. All right, so in basketball, do y'all say tournament or tournament? Tournament. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, dang, I got. All right, here, coach. Tournament. All right, here you go. It's a big one. Do you put ketchup or mustard on your hot dog? Say it one more time for me. Ketchup, 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 ketchup. ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> really, I, I put mustard on my pretzel. I put mustard on my pretzel. Yeah, mustard on your pretzel? What? That's supposed yeah. to be cheese. See, me, right. me and him could get along. Me, we could get along with this. <laughs> right. I, 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 I know I got to ask you answer this one. Emos or dominoes? Emos all day long. <laughs> Emos. Emos all day long. <laughs> Well, that's cool. That's cool, Coach, man. I appreciate you coming on. So tell us one thing that you, I mean, you went to CBC, you coached for CBC. So what's, you know, one good thing about CBC? And if you were talking to somebody, like, what would you tell them some, one of the best things about CBC? The brotherhood, the connection, the, the realness, you know, the, 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 the school accepting who you are, no matter what part of the city, the area, the country you're from. Uh, we don't judge our book by its cover. We embrace it, um, you know, and you can get and you, you can feel at home. So, like, if you want all those things and be able to be ready for the real world, it is being in a diverse, situ uh, diverse situation with the students and the teachers and having all the up-to-date things as far as now our gaming and, you know, all the type of state-of-the-art equipment around. Yeah. And you want to be a winner. You know what I mean? <laughs> you want to be, be a winner. Come on through, man. But it's, it's so many adjectives that I can describe that school, man, and just the, the situation and the people. Uh, it's, it's just second to none. You know, it, it can be. Right. It can hey, be. now, is it true that you got the most uh, technical files in the state? For sure. The, tec the technical most technical <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> number, technical one, file. No, number, no, number one. Number one. Uh -huh. Number one. <laughs> you know, only if, you go, if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna do it, you might as well be number one. <laughs> might as well be number one. Oh, you know, might as well be the top dog or something. I, you know. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Coach. Thank you, man. Go ahead. Thank you. I, I'm just saying, I died, I died down a little bit. It's all good. I'm just saying, hey, it is what it is. 
You don't call what you want to call. You got to figure something out. But, you know, right. I hope somebody else will take my place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not yet, though. So, we appreciate it, Coach. Man. I know you're going to get back to your thing. So, uh, thank man, you, man. Thank you. Have a good team, Coach. You for coming on. All right. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Take care, guys. Yeah. Right. Take care. Yeah.